Aw, I'm wrong. The last wish, man. It was, it was interesting. Hi, my name is Joella, and today we're going to be doing a very in-depth, chapter by chapter, going through the last wish, because I just want to. I've been wanting to do this discussion for so long. I was going to do it like earlier, but then I just wanted to make sure I got everything and made sure everything's perfect. I went through about 60% of my annotations, so I'm just going to discuss what I've annotated, some funny things that I found in between, the general plot, and every single short story in the book, because I do want to talk about it, and I have no one to talk to, so like... I'm going to talk to you. This series is called Annotate With Me because I feel like it's a need for me to just really share what I found in the book that I found interesting rather than just giving an overview or just guessing certain plot points or talking about just the big plot points. I want to really ding sink into the little things that make a book really fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Voice of Reason 1 really hooked me into the story. I won't lie. Like, I wasn't expecting the type of introduction. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect that to be the first page. And just seeing it being like a mild little sex scene was quite like, it was a bit shocking, but then, hey, what, what can we do? When I first read it, I assumed it was between Yennefer and Geralt. And I'm still going to say it's between Yennefer and Geralt until I get further in the series. And yeah, it was, quite, it was short, like a page. I was kind of confused as well, but eh, you know, it, it is what it is. The chapter called Witcher, I thought that was a very nice chapter. I think it was nice to see Geralt doing work, like his job. That was kind of cool. I think there was an, it was an okay introduction to who Geralt is and what he's all about. We got to learn about his codes of conduct, a lot about his like abilities like the whole eye thing and how fast he moves and all that how he conducts his work he isn't like a killing machine he's rather just very he takes the the route for less casualties i can say and i think that's really cool this is where i found like a lot of pass by characters you know what i mean like this whole like book was just a lot of characters that i didn't take the time to learn the names of unless they were actually important but otherwise i felt like this short story was very much people that i don't really care about which is annoying because it was the first book so it makes me feel like i'm forgetting people that are going to be important later but you know that's why we annotate so we remember with the king faltus and his problems with his daughter that whole like talking about his daughter i firstly i already thought that the daughter was siri but it's not and i was like oh I'm wrong. My favorite part of this chapter was the conversation between Faltist and Geralt as well as the fight scene. Faltist and Geralt's conversation was really cool. I thought it was nice how we saw how Geralt was talking about his morals and his code of conduct that he kind of made himself, you know what it is. I think it was very interesting to see his morals and like what he stands by and what is really important to him and how he's gonna conduct his job and just telling Faltist, not really telling him how bad things could get and how good things could possibly get. I like that he gave the man options. It's, it's kind of nice to see what type of person he is, I think. Because I, my first assumption of Geralt was definitely like, killing machine, out to kill, for money, terrible, bad guy, but we love him. But this showed me that I actually think Geralt is a good guy. But that's when I was at this point of the story. When we get further, I start to change a bit, but mm. I really, really like the fight scene between the, the daughter when she's a beast thing slash werewolf, whatever the heck she is. I really like the fight scene between Geralt and the girl. Like, ooh, I really like that. Not because of like the actual fighting, but because of how it was written. Like the whole fight scene, it's very rare for me to read a fight scene and really see it like so well that I won't get lost. So being able to read this fight scene and see it so nicely was just like so refreshing like, going on to voice of reason too when he's talking to neneke uh when i first met neneke i was kind of like okay who's this let's be honest the voice of reason chapters i i just didn't like them i didn't like them there was only one that i did like but the rest were just kind of like it was like that one chapter in a book where you just can't you just skip it or like just skim through it because you're just not interested but i know it'll be important later in the series but for now i'm just like not interested in Nineke and the temple and lyola like ugh. i really liked grain of truth a grain of truth was like a beauty and the beast retelling tell me if i'm wrong because i thought it was a beauty and the beast retelling nevelyn and his monster that was really cool i enjoyed that because nevelyn and Geralt had this conversation and i just i was really into it i don't know it was like it was so nice to see characters with dialogue that doesn't feel like it's dialogue. You get me? I don't know. Is it just me? I didn't like how Ninevin kept saying, drink more, girl, to drink more. And I'm like, what? Yeah, it was on page 51 where he keeps saying, drink more, girl. And I was so confused. Like, I don't trust this guy. Like, why are you telling girl to keep drinking? I thought it was because he wanted to distract Geralt, which I think he did, but that's not really important. The whole concept of this man, like, getting new girls every now and then, and then they come, then he doesn't get what he wants, the curse doesn't break, and then he lets them go, and they're rich and whatnot. That was quite interesting, but I don't know. That whole, like, chapter 
I won't lie, I was slightly confused, but I got the idea of what, what's going on. Like, I got it. I just didn't fully... Uh. But I really liked how Roach, the horse, is like a character, Loki. Like, I liked how Roach, like, kind of told Geralt, not told, but then, like, struck a nerve with Geralt when they were run going away, not running away, going away from, like, the whole castle place. And then Geralt was like, oh my gosh, you've got it, Roach, you have such an instinct. And I was like, yes, you go, Roach. I like seeing that, like, animals... They are your friends, guys. They are your friends, especially horses. Oh. The next chapter was Voice of Reason 3. Eh, once again, it's just short. But I did like how we saw how the world views witchers in this world. Like the whole like prejudice against witchers. There's this line. I wrote down here prejudice against witchers because on this particular chapter, it kind of like tells us how witchers are being viewed in this world and i was very interested because now i thought that witches would have been praised in this world i thought it was like a world with lots of monsters and now they're killing like ooh, but it's not the case and i was like oh now i have an idea of how society works in this world it was it was interesting that's the one thing i liked from this um voice of reason Ooh, the lesser evil i freaking love this chapter there were so many things in this chapter that i just i freaking love like my notes like my notes so when Geralt arrives in the town and he brings that that kikimura is it a kikimura yeah when he brings a kikimura into town he's like yeah i killed it like i want to exchange it for money or whatever and then he says this lie and it broke my heart and he's just like um i'm not a good person i'm a witcher and i was like no babe you are a good person you just have a very interesting lifestyle i really enjoyed the conversation that strigobor and um Geralt had together where they're talking about like their jobs and it basically shows the relationship between um witch witchers and like witches or warlocks i believe or sorcerers yeah whatever i really liked how Geralt was getting so peased off by strigobor it was just like so entertaining seeing Geralt's actual feelings besides you know if you have this edition as well, page 84, I thought it was very interesting. Uh, check your privilege. Uh, I think it's about the sorcerer, but I'm not going to read it right now because I need this video to be short. On page 87, still still in the beginning of this uh, chapter, we start talking about the girl, Shriek. And, you know, Struggle Boy is like, yeah, she's terrible. She poisons people. She's bad. The queen tried to get rid of her, blah, blah, blah. And then the whole thing gave me like Snow White vibes when he started talking about how she lives with like seven little men. I really like the whole Snow White concept. It was pretty cool. Uh, but then it went downhill when it says that the little dwarves like killed each other. And then Strugabor says this. They argued about something. I don't know what. Sharing out the loot or whose turn it was to spend the night with her. Anyway, they slaughtered each other with knives. Dang, man. Even this person here blurbed the book and said there's a fairy tale quality to much of The Last Wish. And there definitely is. It's very like, I don't know, it just feels so authentic and familiar all at once. Of course it's familiar, but then I don't know, it feels like he's making it his own. And I, and I really appreciate that. All right, going further in the chapter when Geralt meets the Shriek and then uh, finds out her name is Renfi. I really like their talks. I really like how they're talking and she's explaining the whole story and talks about how the huntsman raped her and I was just oh I was I was not expecting that at all and then she talks about how she survived basically and what she went through in the castle and, and all that. It was very interesting to read. My favorite parts when um Renfi and Geralt are talking was when they spoke about forgiveness and she just says, I can't forgive, like no, I can't. And then Geralt tends to he just explains that look um, you need to forgive not for them, but for yourself, basically. And it was really nice. But then, you know, you know which route she took. So, I mean, if you don't forgive, you'll end up in the pits. That's what, that's what I'm saying. That was page 100 where she explained herself and page 103 where they talk about forgiveness. And I really like those two. I really also enjoyed how Geralt was talking to uh, Renfi about not picking evil and picking the lesser evil. I thought that was like not picking evil at all. That there's lesser evil and then there's big evil. Like this is a thing for Geralt. He's definitely like all evil is the same proportion, same evil. All of it is bad. I thought that was very interesting. I don't know. I just really liked his views. His morals are what make him for me definitely not just his good looks or like what he does but definitely his morals because i think that's what makes a character knowing what they stand for because then it's a real person and i really really enjoyed that about Geralt. at the end of the chapter page 113 i thought it was very interesting how people viewed Geralt after all of this like in the beginning they were mildly scared of him but also thankful that they took he took away a beast and there was like still a level of respect for him but then after killing 
uh, Renfi because she was a threat to the town. She was gonna kill everyone. She was the definite threat to the town. And then Geralt kills her, but because of like law and order and how society views her and the whole like everything around that chapter at the end there. Um, I thought it was interesting because I think people were grateful, but also they were more scared and 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 just wanted to judge him. And I thought it was very interesting. And then when he's told to leave, like get out, it was I don't know. It felt like betrayal. And then I, then the way Geralt handled the situation, it was like it was very familiar to him. So I thought it was very interesting to see that in his job, it's never always going to be, oh my gosh, thank you for helping us. You're such a great guy. Oh my God. Voice of Reason 4, it was, I thought it was a prayer the whole time. I didn't like, it didn't register. I know the first line says that he's speaking to Iola, but then it didn't register that he was actually speaking to Iola. Like I was kind of thought he was just praying and just being heard by one of the saints of the, the, temple or whatever it was a very interesting moment for Geralt I think he was very vulnerable just like voicing how he feels in a way I don't know that whole like chapter was quite interesting and I'm gonna look into it more and more um the further I get in the series maybe it'll explain some stuff later because at the time I read this it was very like what is this <laughs> a question of price I really like this chapter the whole like kind of Fiona Shrek retelling like that just, just very nice i really enjoyed that i liked how many twists they were in this like little chapter they were like three different twists voice of reason five when we finally get an introduction to dandelion i was really happy to see dandelion i've heard good things about him i heard that he's like a comic relief for the series and i can see it he's very much a little player a little little poet playing around with words and all i liked him i really like him and then when we go further into the edge of the world chapter I enjoyed them. The, actually, the whole interaction between Geralt and Dandelion in that chapter, I enjoyed. Everything else in the chapter of Age of the World was just like a waste of time for me. I think I wrote something down about how I felt about that whole chapter. Yeah, at the end of the chapter, I wrote down this. I said this chapter was boring, drawn out for no reason and a waste of time. I get the message, but I was not kept at attention and I wasn't entertained in the least bit. Yeah, I definitely felt like that and still feel like that now i will probably reread this chapter when i need to if ever i get confused later in the series or whatever but right now i was like mm, i don't like it and i still don't like it on page 167 when girls talking about how people are monsters and how they make themselves they they confuse themselves they trick themselves into thinking that they're not people like to invent monsters and monstrosities then they seem less monstrous themselves when they get blind drunk cheat steal beat their wives starve an old woman when they kill a trapped fox with an axe or riddle the last existing unicorn with arrows they like to think that the bane entering cottages at daybreak is more monstrous than they are they feel better then they find it easier to live are you really a saint here and i thought that was a very nice chapter because it's the truth that people do very much make themselves feel better by trying to see the bad in others and i thought that was very interesting not all the time not all the time but just i'm just saying this is something that does happen in the real world as well and i thought it was really interesting seeing fantasy just transcending into the real world I just mm, fantasy i really liked in this chapter when Geralt and um dandelion are surrounded by these people captured and then uh, dandelion starts speaking just like them because they had a really funny dialect and i thought it was funny they thought it was funny and then later on they got sick of it. I got sick of it. And then hearing Dandelion, like, oh, hearing, reading Dandelion, like, speaking just like them was just really funny for Geralt and for me. I thought it was funny. Even down here, I said that I'm over it. I'm over this and I'm annoyed. Voice of Reason 6 gave me hope that we're finally going to see Yennefer. Because now it was the first time that she's actually, like, talked about, like, actually, like, talked about. And I know it's her. The whole of Voice of Reason 6, I thought it was quite interesting, was the only Voice of Reason I actually liked. Something I found interesting as well in this chapter was when he talks about how Yennefer treated him and he's talking about, oh my gosh, like, there's a reason why I left and all that. And I thought, oh my gosh, girl, you're having so many excuses, like, stop, calm down, love, calm down. I think this was the first time I actually got annoyed by Geralt because I just didn't like the way he talked about Yennefer because I already... I, I've already been told that they're like together forever. They're they're in it for each other. They love each other or whatever. So hearing him saying all this stuff about her was kind of like, okay, I'm confused now. Like I thought they were like on the same page. I didn't expect them to be in a rocky place in their relationship, which is something I don't see a lot in fantasy where people actually have problems in their relationship. They go through ups and downs. It's not always destiny and fate, which brings me to the next chapter, The Last Wish. The Last Wish, man, it was, it was interesting. 
Ugh. This chapter, I really liked how Yennefer was introduced as this snobby little brat. Oh, that was funny. I liked how like the whole scene of getting like the apple juice and she's like, oh, thank you for the apple juice and all that. And she's just like lounging about. Like that was really entertaining. I liked that introduction because I think it gave and a, a good idea of the type of person Yennefer is, which is consistent in this chapter. Like I didn't see her change. She didn't become the sympathetic little baby. All of a sudden, she didn't become anything else. She was just rich, literally like the little whatever she is like she just continued in that like frustrating tone and i really liked oh another thing i really love how Geralt like talk so much with yennefer like they just talk and they talk and they talk i've never heard girl talk so much heard well wow. i've never read girl talk so much like in with anyone in the book so hearing him talk like this with her like for such a long time and constantly was it was a bit shocking. I think it gives a tell of their relationship because definitely for him to be so open and to actually talk to someone, I think that was really like a sign that there must be something special about them together because Gerald doesn't talk much and it was so nice to see him actually having like shock on his face and like his face was moving for like once in a while. It was really, it was nice. I liked it. What the last wish was, I honestly... That whole chapter, aside from like the whole like, oh, bring me back the seal and then Dandelion having a wet dream <laughs> about Virginia. Aside from those, I was like, okay with the chapter. It was actually kind of confusing at the end. Like, what was the last wish? I still don't know. Maybe I'll get it like during editing of this and then I'll figure it out. I'll let you know. Did I figure it out, Javala? There's your answer. Another thing that Geralt did in this book was when he's like, oh, she's different because she doesn't wear a dress or that's like a net, those net dresses. Uh, what's it? The whale, whale tail dresses. And he's like, yeah, she's different and all that. Like, I, like, okay, babe. Okay. There was no need for you to tell us how great Yennefer is by putting down other women who put on something that she just doesn't like. Mm, it's a preference. It's a preference, love. I didn't like that. And then how he says like, like Yennefer isn't a great beauty like she's beautiful but she's not a great beauty I was like what are you saying are you saying that she's basic I think I wrote that down to it was on page 235 I think yeah he's just like oh ah, she's attractive in her own way couldn't pass as a great beauty and I was like oh, okay girl fun stuff I even wrote up here I was like so is Jennifer basic not a great beauty <coughs> confusion anyway then came voice of reason five i was just kind of i was kind of finished the story i thought it was gonna end on the last wish but then voice of reason five where he leaves and leaves neneke and ayola and whatever i uh, i didn't really care to be honest i think i wrote something down i just said i even i'm even more confused and i was just like whatever i, I had no annotations there i just kind of said okay we're, we're ending this is the outro let's get on with it those those are all my thoughts on um the last wish and you can tell that i i don't know i half and half with it i didn't love it i didn't enjoy all of it i didn't hate all of it but i did hate some of it a lot of it i just felt like was just so useless but at this point right now but i'm sure like the further i get into the series i'll understand the full purpose of this because already reading blood of elves i can see that this definitely plays a role in understanding the world understanding Geralt and understanding what the heck is happening so definitely just it's a good time we can we can all agree we had a somewhat good time with this book like a little bit but for me i don't know if you loved it let me know but for me hey i don't know it was just one it's one of those books where i just i read it because i have to for the series <laughs> thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed this and yeah get to annotating and if you don't annotate get to rereading those chapters Thank you for your time and I'll see you again. Okay, bye.